Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. The reason I started my personal training course was because I really wanted to improve my health and I wanted to be able to be qualified to try and help other people improve their health. Um, so you can imagine my concern when I went onto the internet to try and get some video ideas and I was seeing the worst advice on losing weight and being healthy than I have ever seen. And I wanted to show you some of the bits I found because it is truly shocking. The advice you give to people can have such a profound effect that you really need to be careful what you're telling people to do. Um, and that is why I did the course and why I'm doing the course because I want to know that I am qualified to give safe, healthy advice to help people reach their goals. And honestly, some of these answers that I saw were just so bad. But let me show you the first one that really made me realise that there's some really bad advice out there. So this is so bad that I actually don't know if they're joking. They might be joking. But what's worrying is that if I can't tell they're joking, how's the person who's reading this, who's asked the question, how do they know it's joking? Because they might then take this seriously and do all these things they're suggesting. But let me just read through them for you so you can just get a feel for what this video is going to be. So the question is, what is the best possible way for women to lose weight? And the answer, I just, I don't even think I'm ready to read this. Cut water about 18 hours before the weigh-in. So dehydrate. This means zero drinking and no watery foods like fruit. From here, you will want to match the amount of calories you expect to burn by the weigh-in. About 17,000 calories of resting. Um, you don't know that. You have no idea the height of this person, the weight of this person. They could be a six foot woman and you're telling them that they should be eating 17,000 calories. With only foods such as peanut butter, no idea why, no idea why they're suggesting just eating peanut butter. You need to burn 3,500 calories a day to lose one pound a day. They're suggesting you lose one pound of weight a day. I just, I wanna be out already. <laughs> And you need anything, anywhere between 2,000 and 2,500 calories a day if you're doing a routine activity. So again, they don't know this because they don't know how much this person weighs. They might be really petite and it would actually be less than that. They might be quite tall and heavy build and then it will be more than that. But the final line is what gets me. That means you need to starve yourself the whole day and exercise as much as you can to lose the remaining calories. I just... I just don't know what to do. Now let's just break down what the issues are with this post. So first of all it says cut water about 18 hours before your weigh in. Like 18 hours without drinking, that is so bad for your body, you need to hydrate, your body is made up of water and yes by not drinking water you will weigh, weigh less but it's not like you've lost fat, you've lost water. Your body is starving for water and needs water to survive. So don't stop drinking 18 hours before you're weighing because even if you feel thirsty that means you're already dehydrated. So you need to make sure you never feel thirsty to mean that you're at optimum hydration. So don't do this. Don't don't listen to this person. So I've already touched on as well is that about matching the calories and all that. I'm not really sure what they mean by that because they're saying match the calories but that will mean you won't lose weight. But they're also just, they've given out a number which is so dangerous because you never know what someone's number is. Um, that might be way too low for them and they will end up feeling dizzy, unwell, weak. So just don't, don't do it. But the thing that really concerns me is towards the end of the, like, Water, telling someone not to drink, concerns me, but this also concerns me. It says that you need to burn 3,500 calories a day to lose one pound of weight a day. Now, that is scary advice to be giving. You should never be telling someone to lose a pound of weight a day. The optimum amount and the healthy amount is one to two pounds per week. So if you're losing seven pounds a week, you are hugely over what you should be and you need to rein it in because it's dangerous to be in that much like to be in a 3500 calorie deficit every day your body is gonna be crying by the end of it and then it's the last line as well that means you need to starve yourself the whole day 
and exercise as much as possible. Um, no you shouldn't because by what this person is telling you, you need to eat barely anything and exercise which is incredibly dangerous when you don't have food in you and fuel in your body. I just don't know if it's a joke. It seems too barbaric to be actual advice that someone is giving, but it could be. I don't know. It could be a joke. I hope it's a joke, but they need to explain at the end, I'm joking, because it's not obvious, because it could be legitimate advice. But let's go on to the next one. So this is actually just the question I was concerned about. I, I love the answer that was given, but the question is, my girlfriend doesn't want me to build too much muscle. She says it's ugly and that she will break up with me but I really want to start working out more and build my body. What do I do? Now, this isn't really anything to do with bad weight loss advice. I just really wanted to include it because this person is sadly in, in possibly quite a difficult relationship because you should always want to be a healthier version of yourself. I think it's very good to want to be healthier and to strive to be healthy both, both physically and mentally. And by the sounds of this, A, he wants to improve his body and make himself healthier physically, and B, if he can't do that, he's then struggling mentally because he's now struggling with the concept of his girlfriend doesn't want him to do this, but it's something he really wants to do. And that's going to cause a mental turmoil for him as well now. I just think it's so sad that your partner who was meant to love you would not want you to have a healthy life and improve the health or do th something that they're really passionate about. It's just incredibly sad that someone would want to hold you back in that way and if anyone is telling you not to lose weight or not to get healthier or not to gain weight or not to be at your optimum state of health then you need to really evaluate what purpose they have in your life. No one should be telling you to stay unhealthy because that's dangerous and that's bad for your health. I really do feel for this guy because he does not deserve to be put through this. He should be given love and affection and joy and encouragement with this if he wants to build a better body. Um, so yeah, this is really sad. So this question is, if I am five foot six and I weigh 230 pounds, is it possible to lose one pound a day and drop 30 pounds by the end of the month? Again, this question is very concerning and worrying. Um, so luckily the person does say, in the answer to this, very unlikely. So they do really well explaining why it won't be possible and like how many calories you need to burn and how much that equates in exercise, bloody bloody blah. And then they go on to debunk fasting as well by saying fasting for seven days, you might lose seven pounds, but most of the first week is just stuff in your digestive system. So yeah, it's really good. I actually am very grateful for the advice that he gave and he just sort of debunked it straight away and said, don't try it. So the next one, how do you lose weight in a week? Now. I don't have an issue with this question because you can theoretically lose weight in the week. I'm aiming to lose one to two pounds every week, so you can lose weight in a week. Um, it's the advice again that's just concerning. So it says cut all carbs, except fruit. You should never feel you need to cut out whole groups of food to lose weight. You need to have a balanced diet, look at the eat well plate and follow that because that is a great way to stay healthy and have a balanced diet. You don't want to be cutting out whole foods. If you're cutting out carbs, then you're cutting out grains, which give you fiber, which keeps your digestive tract normal. It keeps your body motions moving, if you can get my drift, because if your body motions aren't moving, you can actually be hospitalized. So you've got to eat that fiber, and they're just telling you to cut all carbs, all carbs. You don't need to cut carbs. Carbs are great. Carbs give you energy. Carbs will help you do a workout better and more efficiently. So don't feel like you have to cut carbs. Drink only water. Now, okay, that's all right. And now I actually like drinking only water. So if, if there, someone gave me advice like that, I'd be like, yeah, nailed it. Exercise 60 minutes every day. Yeah, again, not so bad, but you do need to have a rest day. So in that week, you, you shouldn't be working out hard every day of the week because that can be dangerous and you do need to have time to give your body some time to recover. No red meat, not going to really comment because lots of science has said one way and lots of science has said the other way and I personally don't eat red meat and I don't want to put my opinions on other people because you need to make your own choices. So basically it says to only get protein from baked white meat, chicken, cod, salmon etc. So that will probably be because it has a lower fat content than red meat I assume so that's where they're getting at with that one. I highly recommend not eating after 6 7 p.m. The majority of individuals don't the majority, I think they mean the majority. The majority of individuals don't exercise after eating meals in the evening hours. Good luck, have the best day ever. So, 
I don't really know where they're getting at with that because just because you don't have to exercise after you've eaten to lose that weight like if you don't exercise it doesn't mean the whole of that meal you've just eaten is going straight on your hips it doesn't work like that the body is just it just doesn't work like that so it doesn't matter if you don't exercise in the evening um you can still lose weight I guess again actually I don't mind the advice of of don't eat past a certain time because I, I personally find it quite uncomfortable to go to bed on a full stomach but I don't think you need to put an exact time to people because then people will start making rules they'll think that they have to keep to this and if they eat at 7.15 then they failed and that's not true some people might not get off work until 7 and they will need their meal and then they will miss that meal because they think I can't eat past 7 just don't eat too late and make sure you're comfortable do what's right and do what feels right for your body it doesn't mean by eating late you're going to gain all that weight you might find it affects your blood sugars and things like that by eating really late and not being active but you know if you need to eat and it's the difference of you missing a meal or not missing a meal i would say eat so here is the question how can i lose 20 kilograms in 60 days so this is what eight weeks about 60 days is about eight weeks 20 kilograms in eight weeks is quite a lot. The maximum you should be doing is eight kilograms in eight weeks because it's about a kilo a week you should be doing. So already the concern is that they are asking to lose a lot more weight. Now this is me assuming it is someone who maybe isn't obese because people who are obese can actually shed a lot more weight a lot more quickly. But if I'm on the assumption that it's someone, let's say similar to my size, so I have a bit of extra weight that I'm looking to lose, um, so I'm currently about, I think I'm 13 kilograms away from where I would like to try and be. Um, so let's say that's me. And then someone is giving me this advice. I know someone who lost over 60 pounds when they water fasted for 33 days, averaging two pounds loss per day. There was about a 10 pound regain of water weight when returning to a regular diet. In seven days, I lost 14 pounds, a slight water gain, but saw continued weight loss when restricting calorie intake. And then it talks to you about working out your um, total daily energy expenditure. And then it says to cut it by 500. Now that is not bad advice. That's okay advice. Track everything you eat, write it down and total your calories every day. A calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight yet you've just told them to do a water fast. And I know you're technically in a calorie deficit by doing a water fast, but that's not a healthy way of losing weight. Start cooking yourself so you can be sure of what is in your food and prioritize protein to feel fuller for longer and keep muscle while losing fat. You can lose more if you want. Either reduce calories by 100 to 200 to start while walking more and progressively increasing the amount you're walking. If you are heavy and you do extreme cardio, you will ruin your joints. So the thing is about this question, this answer, is that they've actually given some really good advice, but they've also mixed in really bad advice. So to start off with, water fasting should not be done without a healthcare professional supervision. It's not recommended to just do it willy-nilly on your own. Not recommended can be dangerous. Please don't do it without consulting your doctor. And then see, but the good advice is that they actually do say calculate how much energy you expend in a day and reduce that by 500 calories and that should be your aim. And I do agree as well with tracking your food because that's how I've been losing the weight. I wouldn't have lost the weight without tracking my food. So it's good advice, but it's not advice for everyone because I know that calorie counting can be a great area for some people and not something people want to do. Um, so actually they have a mixture of good advice and bad advice. And also as well to say reduce the calories a little bit, but I think they mean have the 500 calorie deficit and then reduce it by 100 to 200 calories more or start walking more. A bit of a grey area there. Walking is really good for you. It's very good for your exercise. It's very good for your joints. It's very good for your heart. So actually reducing... So actually reducing... So increasing how much you walk is really good. And then the final bit as well, which is good, is if you're really heavy and you do extreme and cardio, extreme cardio, you will ruin your joints. Now, this is true. You can damage your joints if you are very heavy because it can be too much for your body to take. Um, but if you are really heavy like that to the point where exercise can cause injury, you should be talking to your doctor and getting advice from them and not people on the internet like me. So don't take advice from me. My advice is go to your doctor. Next question. This is where the um, health that all size community is going to come at me. They're going to hate me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do fat people enjoy being fat? I am trying to gain weight and fat. And you know what? I love it. The fat I have now is soft and playable with, which, I act which is actually fun. Any tips on how to get fatter? Brackets. 
I am 4, 9, 11 years old and 83 pounds. I am aiming for 100 pounds, then 150, then 350, so on. She's 11, or he's 11, 11 years old, and they are trying to get advice on how to gain weight to be morbidly obese. It's just so scary that, that there is this community out there that tells you it's fine to be big and have weight. And working in a healthcare environment, I see how many people are on medication for type 2 diabetes because their diet has given them type 2 diabetes. I see high blood pressure, hypertension, I see strokes. I just, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to respond to this. It's so concerning because I think it's great that you can love your body even if you have extra weight. I think that is great because that means that you're in a really good place to start trying to improve yourself mentally and improve yourself physically. What worries me is that they've made it a goal to, to gain more weight, even though it can have such bad health side effects. And I know what the health community are going to say. Oh, I've had a blood test. It's come back completely normal. Yes, for now. But you might be really young. Your body might be very equipped at dealing with it. But when your metabolism starts to slow down, when you start to age, when your body is just not top fighting quality, it's going gonna, it's gonna to chase you and it's going to catch you up. I'm just very concerned that there's an 11 year old who is, has this goal, especially when you're that young, um, because you don't know, I feel like you don't have the capacity to, to understand exactly what you're doing. Um, I think if you wanted to make a decision like that, you need to make sure that you are an adult. And I know no one's going to want to hear that because everyone when they're that age thinks they're an adult, but you honestly need to hold off until you're older and you can make a real confirmed decision because you might get to 18 and you might decide you want to travel the world, you might decide you want to live in another country, and you might want to help with the malaria vaccine that's currently come out and, and help people in that way. And you won't be able to because you won't be able to move or get out of bed or walk to your bathroom. Next question. How can I lose 20 kilos in two weeks? This free book is useful. Next question. How do I lose weight in 31 days at home? Drink one glass of warm water and add lemon to it. Lemon has no fundamental proof that it will help you lose weight. If you just add water and lemon together and eat a thousand more calories than you should be a day, you're not gonna lose weight. Lemons are not that miracle food, I'm afraid. Avoid spicy food during weight loss. Well, this is interesting because I actually have seen documentaries where they said spicy food can actually help you lose weight. So I don't know why they've said this. Maybe they should link some scientific evidence as to why they said it. Do yoga regularly. That's fine. No issues with that. Avoid dinner. Instead of that, drink milk before going to bed. Why are people on the internet telling others who they don't know to avoid eating meals and to starve themselves and to not drink? Why are we doing this? Eat protein rich foods. Okay, that that's okay. You know, protein, body uses a lot more calories breaking down co protein, it's very good for the body, body needs it, but there is also a limit to how much protein you should eat, and it can get dangerous. You should not eat more than 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein a day, so, you know, it doesn't say that in there. It's so difficult in these situations because they, what credibility do they have to give this advice? Why are they telling someone they don't know to avoid dinner? What if they're diabetic and you've just told them to not eat? Like, ah, uh, is this it? Have I got more? That's it, thank God. <laughs> I can't read anymore because it's just concerning. It's very dangerous, the advice that is out there. And I'm gonna always be very conscious with the advice I give on the internet because I wanna make sure that I'm not putting anyone at risk and I'm only improving their lives. But there are people out there giving advice and I don't know what credibility they have to give this advice. They don't know these people. Like, I don't know you guys. If I'm giving you advice, take it with a pinch of salt because it may not be right for you. So you need to adjust it to what is right for you. But telling, I'm never gonna tell you guys to skip a meal. I'm never gonna tell you guys to not drink water because that is dangerous. And 
you shouldn't be doing that to your body. Like that's putting your body through so much stress. It's gonna create cortisol. It's gonna make you gain weight. So I just, why are we giving these people advice? And the ones I missed out most, I know I did mention one where there was an 11 year old, but so many of these are children who are asking to how to lose weight and they are so young and people, just random people are giving them advice. They should be being encouraged to go and talk to their parents, to be able to talk to people at school, um, to try and find a way to help them, to find out A, if they actually need to lose weight because restricting calories at that young age, incredibly dangerous. They're growing people. They need calories to be able to develop into human beings and adults. Just be very careful what you read online guys. When buying things online like supplements and things like that, make sure it's from a credible place and not some dodgy internet because I did that when I was very young. No idea what's in that stuff. Luckily I didn't die. Ugh, I just, I'm so flustered and now I've got to go to work and try and <laughs> concentrate. Basically what I'm saying from this video is that don't trust everything you read on the internet, including me. Take what I say with a pinch of salt and do your own research. If you're gonna take advice from the internet, research it first and make sure that it is credible and true and from a reliable source. Not from Quora and people who have no idea what they're on about. I could just go on forever. I need to stop rambling. Don't listen to the internet always, guys. Bye.